listen, bro. The, the call, look, bro. The man dealt with R. Kelly in my living room, bro. The man dealt with R. Kelly in my kitchen. We dealt with Don Russell in my kitchen, bro. I'm telling you this right now. I'm putting music and videos for our paying people. We need more money for profit. We need money for them to go for the real business. We have to do this high profit. Well, I'm Carlita. I'm, I'm out of Chicago. I was married to Craig Hodges, who played for the Chicago Bulls for ten and a half years. We have two sons, and um, hmm, did end very well. And so, and so, you say that there was infidelity on both of your parts. Let's talk a little bit about you, because from what I read in doing my background research on you, there was a a pretty. Um, Public <laughs> affair, shall we say, with a very public person? Did you have an affair with R. Kelly? I did, and he was not R. Kelly. He was Robert at the time. Um, my brother, who was his uh, road manager, who became his road manager, he uh, brought him to our home. We met him. He was singing in the subway in Chicago. And with that being said, um, my ex-husband wanted to take him on as a project. And instead of him taking him on as a project, he put me in charge. I did not know what I was doing. Well, and you so, knew something because you knew, <laughs> so, you knew how to I do something. So how so, old were you and, and how old was he at that time? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. He was uh, nine years younger than me at the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you say that he was still sing singing in the subway. He was pretty young at that point. Yeah, he was in his 20s and I was in my 30s. So, yeah, we, we were young. But um, we didn't start the affair right away. It came a little bit later. And um, I think, I, I don't have any excuses. We did it. It was fun and a learning experience at that time. And I was going through a lot of, um, my excuse for me was I was going through a lot of neglect and, and distrust, so I did it. If you were reading a book, would you start in the middle of the book and try to get an understanding of what's going on with the entire book? Or would you start from the beginning and try to get a clear picture of what is going on? So when I listen to people speak on this case and or speak on Robert Kelly personally and don't know the man, when all they can do is just go back and let the black and white speak for what actually happened and then put their perspective on it, then you will see why a lot of these goofy people that find themselves in the comments, I pay absolutely no mind. And let me make this make sense because it's a whole lot of people part of this No Child Left Behind act that are slow and don't read much. So they like to make all these comments and insult you instead of using their common sense. But watch how this works. The minute these people that hate Robert Kelly see content that is not feeding their egos, they get to displaying this type of behavior they want to give to Robert Kelly. They want to observe that we have free thinking ability, so they want to come over here and insult. They want to say, well, you better hope it don't help into your child and all this extra shit. They want to assume that the content creator that's producing the content has had this sugar-free, carefree life and never think that maybe, just maybe, these people creating content are speaking from experience. So if I've come out here and told you all that 
I've had these type of experiences which have shown me the type of backdoor things that go on behind the scenes in the industry from modeling to the music and people want to bypass what I'm saying just to pump out their emotions. It is what it is. But Pete Game, if I have said that from my experience, it seems like more people are interested in exploiting women. They would rather feed you this bullshit of this will expose you. So a lot of people end up engaging in these productions and don't get paid. So with that being said, if you're vengeful because of that, that's one separate thing. But when you have a woman like me who peeps game with what's going on, and says that I would rather go get a regular job and make a thousand waffles that I would rather bake a million cakes to fund my own company than to be victimized by some low budget ass sugar daddy. So if people don't put all that into perspective as to the content that I bring, then guess what? Y'all just going to be looking stupid when I really show you how this all looks to me. So back to the corporation that I work for. Considering that everybody knows all these corporations have these policies and all this extra stuff that enables sorry ass employees to come in, do minimal work and still get paid. Meanwhile, the best performers are still going to be stuck, stifled at a hourly rate because this corporation wants to put on the front that they can't increase wages any higher. However, the good workers are supposed to keep coming in, picking up the slack from all the flunkies. And then on top of that, this system is going to allow those type of people to make all these complaints to try to keep you limited with rising with your skills. For example, when I was in the relief manager position, the reason why I stepped down is because technically I had no authority to make any real changes to the flaws that I was seeing. Yet all my employees would smile in my face and then go call this hotline number and make a complaint about me in which these people in the corporation would use that as an excuse to keep me at a relief manager instead of giving me my own store. So again, when I see all this going on and I have common sense to realize that, hey, I can take my skills and start my own thing, and it may take some time, but I can dedicate myself into doing this and accomplish the same money that I have made for this corporation for myself. But guess what? They don't want free thinkers to realize that. So back on this R. Kelly case, think about all these corporations that were funded, that Robert Kelly funded Think about these artists like Britney Spears who came from Jive. And again, if it wasn't for Robert Kelly and other urban artists, those type of corporations would have failed. Just like we see with this Sony Crime Network, which is obviously in cahoots with a lot of these other broadcasting agencies. Oh, just wait. We'll make it all make sense because as I started to point out, it's very odd when some of these Jane Doe's are affiliated with the likes of people who followed Dr. York and all these other spiritual advisors and their weird ass practices. So just another side note. You see, just like this corporation doesn't mind using crackheads and minors to fill these positions and put themselves at risk to get them their money, they don't realize how a person like me can capitalize off of the loyal people that I have coming into their establishment and turn that into customers for myself. The same way the people that look like me who will continuously talk about how I should have my own store, not listen to me talk about how I'm constantly discriminated against 
but will enable the people around me who they also employ to come in, violate their policies, and keep the same dysfunctional cycle going over and over, and people don't peep game. So let's make it make sense. Just like I said with the government, I don't see a RICO with Robert Sylvester Kelly, because let's put it in perspective. He is an employee, just like I am an employee to a corporation. So you'd think the same way that these Jane Doe's started to latch on to these claims with Sony Records and other record labels, the general public will start to listen to the fact that this whole industry is facing a reckoning in general. <laughs> I, I want I want to say this. If I'm going to bring this forth and I'm going to tell you to do this, I'm saying it here. When the statute of limitations passed and they give us a one-year window, I'm going to take Africa Bambada to court. Um, I don't know if we're going to get criminal, but we're going to get uh, monetary. I don't want that man's money. I could have took it when they were trying to offer, offer it to money. me. Yeah. I'm doing this so that he can be labeled as a pedophile. Ah. We, you know, we need to protect our kids. And whatever amount that I'm going to charge him, I'm going to give 100% of his money to a charity that, that handles uh, people who've been molested. The Zulu Nation, I'm not reading the letter, y'all could go read the letter, decided to write an open letter telling them to leave them out of Africa Bambada's business. They don't have nothing to do with what he's being charged with. Well, I beg to differ, right? When I came out on Africa Bambada and I told my story about what he did to me as a child, Shep from the Zulu Nation put out a bulletin all over the internet Labeling me and Ron Savage as COINTELPRO. You know what that did? That had all the dudes in the street that didn't know any better, who didn't know who I was, looking at me as a government agent, an informant. Which pretty much could have lead to the could have led to my death, right? He lied. He retracted that statement within 24 hours because I got on the phone with Ahmed, who was the manager of Africa Bambada and one of the founders of the Zulu Nation. I got on the phone with him and I told him, you have 24 hours to make him change that statement or I'm going to the precinct and we're going to have a conversation about that 1994 Hamo that I was locked up for that they never got locked up for. Bam and I met. Right, if you guessed that they was my co-defendants, they was there. They never got locked up for that. So, this is what I told him. If you gonna turn me into an uh, informant and make me co-intel pro, then I might as well become one. Because you're trying to tarnish my reputation. Now, as far as Shep, this is the role he played. 
by trying to protect Africa Bambata in this situation when we first came out to tell our story. And you telling me that the Zulu nation didn't aid in the bed in what Africa Bambata was doing? Shep, is that what you're saying? Did you not call me an informant, a government agent? Did you not retract your statement when Ahmed told you? Why did Ahmed, mm, Ahmed, 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 why did Ahmed have to wait for me to call him to tell these brothers, nah, this is true. Bam really was doing this when he knew all along that he really was doing this. As the story goes, Ahmed and Mike went to Bam's house, Ahmed's house, allegedly one day when I was incarcerated and they smelled doodle -doo through the house we ain't got to go through the details you already know what time it was and what was, bam, what was bam doing he was playing house getting his r kelly on with them young boys it is what it is let's keep it all the way funky right let's keep it all the way funky this is why ahmed told everybody he closed that apartment down so now you telling me Ahmed didn't know for all of these years what was going on up under his roof when his room was right here straight and Bam room was right here connected both of their doors closed next to each other that's how close they was so you're going to tell me all them, all them days all them years that you was in the house in your room next door you didn't hear all that porn in the next room with them young boys when you came in your house Ahmed you going to tell me that you ain't feel when you were slapping five with all them, everybody, you ain't feel all of Vaseline? Right. Notice all of these broadcasting journalists who were once affiliated with all this weird shit going on in the background. All this gay for play activity. And all these people that claim to be filmed in certain activities you had people who came out once upon a time who would say that people would get you drugged up at these little parties and take advantage of you and then pop in this tape once you're no longer complying with whatever the corporation wants you to do so when I saw all these people coming out on these platforms and all these different associations and the mere fact that all these people run in similar circles let me repeat one more time for the people to ride the slow bus throughout YouTube. These allegations against Robert Kelly are not about these girls. And it's only a matter of time before other people get to see this domino effect we are seeing. And they're not going to be able to hide behind a history of abuse like they're trying to do with Robert Kelly. Just mark my words, and then we'll see how goofy these people look in the comments talking about, well, it's okay until it's your child. And that is why I can't take stupid people serious, because clearly in the two years that I have brought all this suspicious and corrupt activity to the forefront, I have never once said abuse is okay. I have absolutely said that if you believe Robert Kelly is guilty, you, just like me, are watching these people fuck this case all to hell. So, bank on that. The only thing I have left is my voice And now I have to use it for my protection Because they left me no choice See, my work has nothing to do with my private life So stay the fuck out of my business and tend to your own damn life So go ahead, say what you wanna say I'm about who I wanna date But you won't say that shit to my face Cause you know it ain't shit to say Next nigga bring me some dumb shit It's gonna be a misunderstanding Cause niggas that listen to dumb shit Are niggas that be on that dumb shit They need a light cause they ain't got no life So they always caught you in a dumb shit Blocking my path, they don't know the half It's all, they make an assumption Just one do assumptions
Please forgive me how I'm living. I was born to drive a whip. 